So let us continue the discussion of uh, the evolution of the basis operators uh, when you will consider various kinds of pulse sequences. So we have to know how the, the individual basis operators evolve under the influence of different Hamiltonians. Basically there are two components of the Hamiltonian we are dealing with and there will be a Zeeman Hamiltonian and the coupling Hamiltonian. And last class we looked at the evolution of a particular base operators, base operator IKX under the influence of the chemical shift Hamiltonian. Today we will discuss the evolution of that same operator IKX under the influence of the scalar coupling Hamiltonian. So to remind you as to what is the scalar coupling Hamiltonian. The, let me just write here the scalar coupling Hamiltonian is written as Hj is equal to 2 pi Jkl, Kl is the Jkl is the coupling constant between two spins K and L and we have these operators Ikz, Ilz. So this is the for the two spin case this is the coupling Hamiltonian. So for the evolution what we need to calculate is we have to calculate e to the minus Ihj and we using the same basis operators this will be e to the i h j t. And if I explicitly write this here, so I have this B s double prime this is the operator that we get as a result of the evolution. Here you have e to the minus i 2 pi j k l i k z i l z t i k x e to the i 2 pi j k l i k z i l z t. Now, this individual operator can be expanded or written in a simpler form like this e to the minus i 2 pi j k l i k z i l z is equal to cosine pi j k l t by 2 minus 4 i sine pi j k l t by 2 i k z i l z. This can be proved along the same lines as we uh, derived the expressions for e to the i uh, b x for example when we took the expression for e to the let me write here e to, so we will write here e to the minus i beta i k i z. So we wrote in a particular manner here cosine beta by 2 minus i sine beta by 2 and things like that. So this was x here if you are applying it for the pulse this was x here e beta is a flip angle then we wrote is this equal to cosine beta by 2 minus 2 i sine beta by 2. Ix. So that was how it was written. So in the same manner we write this here except we make note uh, of the fact that Ikz Ilz can be written as in terms of the polyspin matrices 1 by 4 sigma Kz sigma Lz. Uh, so this will help us in uh, deriving this equation. Okay. And polyspin matrices satisfy this condition the sigma z square is equal to sigma l z square is equal to 1. So this is the property which we should remember and we can prove this equation. So therefore I am not going to explicitly prove this, this can be a kind of an exercise for the students who can practice this and prove this equation. So we will actually use this equation now as it is and calculate the evolution of the kx operator under the influence of this. So in this place we will have to put this and on this place what we should do ikx and this will be a plus sign when you write for i2 pi i j k l i k z i l z t then this will be the same as this except we will have a plus sign here for i sign. And then you do the multiplication of this part ikx and the other part which is with the plus sign then you arrive at this equation ikx uh, cosine pi j k l t plus 2 i k y i l z sine pi j k l t. So this will be the kind of uh, equation that will come. You notice here that ikx has evolved into a in phase ikx term and it has generated what we may call as your anti phase term. It is the k magnetization which is anti phase with respect to the spin l. You remember earlier we have discussed what these individual basis operators represent. Therefore, here we have said under the influence of the uh, coupling Hamiltonian the ikx 
operator will evolve into this i k x cosine pi j k l t plus 2 i k y i l z sin pi j k l t. So, this is the antiphase term. So, such the evolutions will keep happening and uh, uh, we will look at them as we go along. Now, similarly you can calculate for the basis operator i k y evolution under the Zeeman Hamiltonian this is the chemical shift Hamiltonian and the coupling Hamiltonian h j and they can be represented in this manner. We will not prove this basically they can be derived in the same manner and we will just write it down here and we can use them uh, later. So, the B s prime will be cosine omega k t i k y this is for the k spin here for the single spin and we have minus sin omega k t i k x. So, because here we have considered the evolution of the k x operator. So, the k y operator the k y operator evolves with the in i k y here and minus sin omega k t i k x. Similarly, the coupling Hamiltonian uh, generates this sort of the evolution the B s double prime i k y cosine pi j k l t minus 2 i k x i l z sin pi j k l t. I want to point out here one thing that when you are actually calculating i k x remember we had i k x here in this term, but plus 2 i k y i l z. Now, here you see if you are starting with i k y this gives you i k y cosine pi j k l t minus 2 i k x i l z. Similarly, in this case also when you had i k x evolution it was i k x cosine omega k t plus i k y sin omega k t. If you are considering i k y then it is i k y cosine omega k t minus sin omega k t i k x. Therefore, this indicates in some way a kind of a rotation in the transverse plane and you can pictorially represent them very soon. I already indicated this to you in the chemical shift evolutions earlier uh, uh, that such kind of a representation can be used for calculating the evolutions of any of these operators whether it is i k y or i k x or minus i k y minus i k x and things like that. Now, similarly we can do this uh, exercise for the basis operator 2 i k x i l z evolution under h z and h j. Now, h z works on individual spins therefore, if I consider 2 i k x i l z though which is the uh, transverse term here the transverse term is i k x. Therefore, chemical shift evolution will happen only for the i k x part i l z part will not contribute to the chemical shift evolution. Therefore, if I consider the B s prime here so this will be simply 2 and i k x term evolves as in the case as indicated here earlier i k s cosine omega k t plus i k y sin omega k t and i l z remains as it is there is no change. So, even if it, it is in this form the two product operator the chemical shift evolution works on the individual operator because we have the i l z here and we have the i l z coming here i k x evolves in the usual way as it is for the individual single spin. Now, uh, the coupling Hamiltonian the uh, causes this sort of a transformation here it gives you cosine pi j k l t 2 i k x i l z. So, the antiphase term which remains it has is amplitude modulated by uh, this expression cosine pi j k l t and on you generate here i k y plus sin pi j k l t. Notice here that when you consider i k y rotation you got i k y cosine pi j k l t minus 2 i k x i l z sin pi j k l t. Now, you are considering this you are generating the same terms once more. So, it is it this appears in the positive sign then you have plus sin pi j k l t i k y. So, this indicates to you that these kind of terms some form some sort of a group they transform within themselves. The Hamiltonian here is i k z i l z and but the operator is i k x i l uh, uh, the basis operator is 2 i k x i l z and we have also another basis operator 2 i k y. So, 2 i k z i l z 2 i k x i l z and i k y they somehow form a kind of a group and similarly for the i k x as well this can be represented in the in a pictorial manner like this. So, similarly I can write the same kind of expressions for 2 i k y i l z 
under the influence of Hz and Hj. So, Bs prime here gives me the same here evolution of Iky as an individual chemical shift evolution and Ilz remains here. And Bs double prime which is the result of evolution under the coupling you had cosan pi jklt 2 iky ilz same here and it generates the ikx term. So, as I said these indicate some sort of rotations in a particular plane pictorially we can represent it in like this. So, we put the Hamiltonian this is for the coupling similar thing we wrote earlier for the uh, chemical shift. So, the coupling the Hamiltonian is written along this axis here. So, ikz ilz this is the coupling the Hamiltonian. And if I take the particular base operator ikx here, then it under the influence of this rotation evolution under this, this circle indicates the evolution under this Hamiltonian, it generates it rotates in this manner. So, you get you get a when it rotates like this, you generate components of ikx and 2 iky ilz. Suppose it has rotated up till here, then you generate ikx cosine pi jkl tau and a sin i k y l z sin pi j k l tau. And if we were to continue this rotation under the influence of the same Hamiltonian like this, so what you will get though this vector has moved over here, so you get 2 i k y i l z cosine pi j k l tau as it is here. Suppose it has moved until this, if I want to draw a vector as well here, if I wish to draw a vector here, so then if this rotation has happened for a particular angle this this angle and this will be the pi j k l tau and you will write the cosine pi j k l tau. So, if this is uh, pi j k l tau here then you will have the 2 i k y i l z cosine pi j k l tau and this component will be minus i k x sin pi j k l tau right. So, uh, and similarly it will continue this if you were to start here you will move here if you were to start here you will move here and things like that. Therefore, these actually transform within themselves this ikx 2 iky ilz and ikz ilz this form a group with transform within themselves go from here to here you get this from here to here you get this and this and you can go from here to here again you get this and this under the influence of the same Hamiltonian. So, if I were to write here in the similar manner here to ikx ilz, so I get here ikx going to iky and iky going to minus 2 ikx ilz here and so and this continues to generate me this portion here and the minus iky here so like that. So, this whole set of operators which are present here to ikx ilz iky and this coupling operator here this uh, oikz ilz these form kind of a rotation group when I say rotation group they transform within themselves. So, under the influence of one thing the one operator transforms into the other. So, that is the meaning of the rotation group. So, this is the very these are very useful expressions for calculating the evolution of any density operator uh, as we get along. Okay. Now, that is so much for the evolution of the basis operators. So, those are illustrative examples which I gave you, but there will be we have to do this exercise for every other uh, rotation uh, the basis operator. This will be this can be easily done because we already indicated what sort of principles are involved, what sort of rotation groups are formed and therefore, it is easier to write down the expressions for all of those. Now, we turn to the evolution under the influence of pulses. What do the pulses do? And we have seen earlier the particular basis operator gets transformed by this sort of a uh, transformation. If this represents a rotation, this represents a pulse here, and this is a, and this is the basis operator. This is again a pulse P P S P minus one, and the pulse can be applied along the x or the y axis. And therefore, I write here R Q, the rotation operator R Q, and R Q minus one. So these represent the pulses q can be x or y. Now, let us actually calculate the influence of this on some basis operators. We take as an illustration B s is equal to i z. This is the simplest all of all of those and for a 90 degree x pulse the transformation will be we have to write the individual uh, uh, matrices for this pulses. 
So, we have here R s suppose we apply it along the x axis we have said 90 x pulse therefore, this is R x pi by 2 i z R x minus 1 pi by 2 and we have derived earlier what this R x pi by 2 is in terms of a matrix. So, this will be 1 over root 2 1 minus i minus i 1 and then for the i z we have this representation 1 by 2 1 0 0 minus 1 this is the matrix because the single spin we are considering a single spin here and r x minus 1 pi by 2 will be the inverse of this inverse of this matrix. So, this will be 1 by root 2 and that is 1 i i 1 right. So, one can calculate the inverse of this if you may take a product of this matrix and this matrix you will get 1 right. So, that, that indicates that this is the inverse of this. Now, when you do all these multiplications uh, you will get 1 by 2 0 i minus i 0 and this is equal to minus i y right. So, what this uh, has told us that 90 degree x pulse rotates the i z into minus i y right. So, this is also what we had said earlier in the uh, discussion with the um, uh, derivation of the pulses and that was we can write is uh, so this is the x y z and if I have a vector here i z operator this gets transformed transformed into minus y so it goes here x y z it goes into minus y gets rotated here to minus i y i z goes to minus i y if I apply a pulse along the x axis ok. So, that is the calculation what we got from this 90 degree x pulse. So, i z operator 90 x this is indicated here in the figure. So, actually so this figure is already there. So, if I write here rotation around x and this is y and this is the z. So, the rotation operator is uh, uh, along this i x and z magnetization is rotated into the minus i y. So, from the same we could, we could also see what if your magnetization was along the minus z axis it will go to y. If it were along the y axis it will go to plus z. So, if you are considering the this initial operator here as i y then you can imagine that this i y will go to i z. We said i z will come to minus i y this is what we had in the uh, explicit calculation. Now, if you were to start with i y the same rotation will take i y to i z ok and i x will of course be invariant nothing will happen we will explicitly show that also. And if you were to uh, have minus i y then minus i y will go to minus i z under the influence of this rotation ok. Now, that is explicitly calculated here if b s is equal to i y then what I have to say here r x pi by 2 i y r x minus 1 pi by 2. Now, I put the same matrices here 1 by root 2 1 minus i minus i 1 this is half half this is the i y operator half 0 minus i i 0 and this is 1 by root 2 1 i i 1 this is the inverse of this matrix and if you calculate this you get half 1 0 0 minus 1 that is i z. So, this is the same which it told you before that under the same rotation the i y is going to i z. So, therefore, these again form a rotation groups x y and z these form rotation groups they transform within themselves. If there is a change in sign of course, that is not considered uh, different it is the same rotation group just except that the co coefficient will be different. So, this rotates y into z rotates z into minus y and z rotates minus y into minus z and so on. So, this forms a rotation group. You remember if I had my uh, the rotation around the z axis rotation around the z axis was what that is the chemical shift evolution. When I had the chemical shift evolution my operator was going from here to here i x was going to part of it is uh, was rotating in this plane x to y, y to minus x, minus x to minus y and so on and so forth. Therefore, these three operators form a rotation group and one of them can be the basis operator, other one can be your Hamiltonian. In this case, 
the operate, uh, operator is the ix, the rotation is around this axis therefore and we have the basis operator is iz or iy. In the chemical shift case this was the Hamiltonian, this was the operator and the basis operators were here and therefore one could go from ix to iy, iy to minus I, ix and so on and so forth. So this is the way the we can look at all of this in a comprehensive manner. So this iy goes to iz. So for a y pulse earlier I wrote as x pulse, so the, what does the y pulse do? So the y pulse take this rotation here, we can do the same calculation. So it goes iz goes to ix, notice we have a left handed rotation here, uh, iz goes to ix and ix will go to minus iz and minus iz will go to uh, minus ix and so on. So this is the way the, we describe the rotation groups rotation under the influence of the various pulses. Now what about Ix itself? Suppose your base operator is Ix and I apply 90 degree x pulse. Intuitively you would think that okay nothing should happen to it but let us also prove it. So we put Rx pi by 2, Ix Rx minus 1 pi by 2. So I put the same matrices here 1 by root 2 1 minus i minus i 1 half 0 1 1 0 1 by root 2 1 i i 1 and this will give me half 0 1 1 0 and this is i x. So therefore the i x is invariant under R x pulse. So that is intuitively one would have imagined that you have put the magnetization along this same axis and you are applying a rotation around that axis and you should not move in principle. Now let us consider uh, multi spin basis operators. So far we looked at the individual spin operators and we now turn to multi spin operators. The effects of pulses can be applied on individual spins. Now the pulses can be applied on all the spins or on individual spins. So the effects will be different. Now here we case to consider a case we consider a basis operator 2 ikx ilz and we have seen this operator represents the k magnetization which is anti phase with respect to L and this is a single quantum coherence because this is kx okay kx lz is a single quantum coherence x magnetization of k anti phase with respect to L. Now we apply a pulse on both the spins 90xk plus 90xl so this is called as a non selective pulse it is applied to both the spins k and L. So now what happens? When I apply kx pulse nothing happens to uh, kx right because we said this is invariant x magnetization is invariant under the x pulse therefore nothing happens to the kx operator. And what happens to lz? Now lz goes to minus ly this is we calculated z goes to minus y right. So therefore x pulse on l spin take this ilz to minus ily therefore I get here minus 2 ikx ily. So what is this? Now here we got a mixture of double quantum and zero quantum coherence. This we have explicitly calculated earlier that this represents a mixture of double quantum and zero quantum coherences. So what we have done here is by applying a non-selective 90 degree pulse on anti-phase magnetization of one spin we have converted that into a mixture of double quantum and zero quantum coherences. So these are called as coherence transfers and various kinds of experiments will make use of such kind of transformations. Suppose I take the same operator here, now I apply a pulse not 90x pulse but I apply a 90y pulse, anti y pulse on both the spins. So if I take x what happens to x? So you have to recall when you apply a y pulse what happens to x. So a 90y on lz will take me to 90lx and this will take me to minus 2ikz. So you have to go back and look at what happens when I apply a y pulse on x magnetization. Let us go back and look at this. So this will be uh, easier to follow if you do that. So looking at here. so the what happens when I apply y pulse on x magnetization it will go to minus z right and y pulse on z will take me to x correct. So therefore this apply them here so I get this will go to minus z and lz goes to lx 
therefore I get here minus 2 ikz ilx. Now notice here just the phase change of the pulse has made a huge difference in the transformation. This was antiphase magnetization of the k spin with respect to spin L and now what we have here this is x magnetization of a L spin antiphase with respect to the k spin. Now this is the single quantum coherence this was single quantum this was single quantum this is also single quantum. When we applied a 90 x pulse we had got double quantum plus 0 quantum here from this basis operator. Now when you apply a y pulse to the same basis operator I get a single quantum coherence of the L spin. So this is a different kind of a coherence transfer single quantum to single quantum from one spin to another spin which are coupled from k spin to L spin I get a transfer and this is a single quantum to single quantum coherence just by changing the phase of this 90 degree pulse. So in the earlier case when the 90 degree pulse was along the y axis applied to both the spins so I got a single quantum coherence into a mixture of double quantum and zero quantum coherences and so this has important implications. So this represents conversion of antiphase x magnetization of k spin into antiphase x magnetization of L spin that is a single quantum coherence transfer. Now suppose we apply the again once again with the same operator base operator here but I apply a pulse only on the k spin for example. I will not apply along the L spin at all that means I apply a selective pulse a selective 90 degree pulse on one spin only I apply to only the k spin. So therefore the L spin remains unaffected because I have not applied any pulse onto that and kx takes me to the minus kz therefore this will go 2 ikx ilz takes me to minus 2 ikz ilz. So it is a completely different transformation once more. Now this antiphase magnetization has now got transformed into zz order. Zz order has to do with the uh, order of the, the, of the of the populations in the uh, uh, two states on the top alpha alpha state and the beta beta states as we had discussed earlier. So this antiphase magnetization of the k spin is getting transformed into zz order simply by changing uh, what kind of pulses we apply we get different kinds of transformations of the basis operators. So now if I apply on the other hand a the same basis operator once more here but I apply a pulse selective pulse only on the L spin not on the on the k spin earlier when I applied all on the k spin I got zz order. So now I apply it only on the y spin so what I get here kx remains kx because no pulse applied and lz takes me to lx to ikx ilx. Now this is the mixture of double quantum and zero quantum coherences okay. So therefore you see once again how a single quantum is converted into double quantum plus zero quantum coherence by changing the kinds of pulses we apply. So you notice therefore that a combination of different kinds of pulses with the different cases can really be used to create a whole lot of uh, transformations in your density operator and all of these one we will use when we actually calculate various pulse sequences and that will become an important but this will be easy to calculate in a simple operator form product operator form. So similarly here 2 i k y i l z so far I was looking at 2 i k x i l z and we can calculate similarly for 2 i k y i l z if I start with 2 i k y i l z apply a, a non selective pulse on x both k and l spins along the x axis then I get this into 2 i k z i l y and this is now the L magnetization interface with respect to k. This was k magnetization interface with respect to L and this is L magnetization interface with respect to p. So single quantum to single quantum coherence transfer. So these are important important results which will play a, a very major role in how we calculate the evolution of the density operator through the pulse sequences. So this is referred to as coherence transfer from spin k to spin L in general it is seen that application of RF pulses to antiphase magnetization in multi spin systems causes coherence transfer among the spins is from the basis of many multiple experiments in homo and heteronuclear multi spin systems. So here is a summary of all of these evolutions what I have indicated here once again as a recap so because this will be extremely useful and we have to remember this very well we have to remember this by heart which operator turns which basis operator into what. So which Hamiltonian 
converts what basis operator into what basis operator. So, we will have to see all of this. So, if this is chemical shift evolution your Hamiltonian has the IZ operator here therefore, we wrote right in this manner and your basis operators are Ix and Iy therefore, Ix rotates into the Iy and Iy rotates into minus Ix minus Ix rotates into minus Iy and so on and so forth. So, all transformations happen here these form a rotation group all the these three operators form the rotation group. So, scalar coupling evolution once again uh, the same thing is repeated for the benefit of uh, uh, consolidation. So, you have this uh, the Hamiltonian is 2 i k z i l z we put it along the z axis this is my axis this is my axis. So, this axis is now 2 i k z i l z and i k x is rotated into mixture of i k x and 2 i k y i l z and uh, the same Hamiltonian rotates the basis operator 2 i k y i l z into mixture of 2 i k y i l z and minus i k x. So, if I were to start from minus i k x I will get minus i k x plus uh, the cosine component will be minus i k x and I will get here minus 2 i k y i l z. Now, if I want to put here the anti phase magnetization here it was the starting with the in phase magnetization this is how they transform. If I start with 2 i k x i l z this anti phase magnetization and this operator remains the same 2 i k z i l z this rotates into i k y. So, this will be the cosine component will be 2 i k x i l z and the sine component will be i k y. So, if I consider the rotation further i k y rota uh, rotates into minus 2 i k x i l z partly it remains as i k y the cosine pi j k l tau will be i k y and the sine will be minus 2 i k x i l z minus 2 i k x l sine pi j k l tau. So, this is the way rotation happens I mean when you wrote here this is the rotation is happening depending upon the value of tau your vector will be somewhere here or here or here wherever. So, if it is equal to pi by 2 rotate if tau is such that this whole rotation is pi by 2 then you will go entirely from here to here. If it is not pi by 2 if it is the whole thing is equal to 30 degrees or 45 degrees or something then your vector will be somewhere here. So, you will have a cosine component and a sine component. Similarly, here if you are rotating by an angle pi by 2 that depends upon your value of tau then this goes completely into this. But if it is less than that the vector can be somewhere here then you will have a cosine component here and a sine component. So, with regard to this. So, this is the way we actually uh, calculate the evolutions under the influences of various uh, Hamiltonians. So, to about the rotation by pulses. So, if I have an x pulse the rate i z rotates into minus i y notice here here we consider a 90 degree pulse which goes into this, but you can extend this argument to say well I do not want to apply 90 degree pulse suppose I apply a 45 degree pulse what happens in fact very easy to imagine here. Now, we understood the principles how the rotations are happening if I were to rotate by 45 degrees then the rotation will take the vector from here to here. So, this angle will be 45 degrees though so I will have a component i z and a component i y minus i y. So, a any angle can be chosen. So, if I have a 90 degree pulse it takes me to minus i y, but if I have a beta pulse then I will have cosine beta component for the i z and the sine beta component for the minus i y. So, similarly if I apply this pulse to the i y magnetization goes for a 90 degree pulse it will go here, but suppose I were to apply a pulse which is not 90 degrees somewhere 45 degrees or something or 30 degrees then I would rotate it only up till here then we will have a cosine component here and a sine component here. Similarly, if I were to take a rotation around the y axis a pulse along the y axis the rotations will happen like this i z goes to i x i x goes to minus i z minus i z takes you to minus i x and again minus i x will take you to i z. Once again the same arguments apply with regard to the flip angle instead of a 90 degree flip angle if you use a different flip angle you will get different components along the y and the z axis. So, with that we will stop here and we will continue the discussions in the next class.